Hey, top of the morning. This is radio broadcast of champions uh, preaching to Uganda and the Congo, the U.S., and anyone else that listen. This is going to be an exciting day. This is 2014. This is a new year. It's going to be an exciting year. And I think I have some good words for you guys to pump us up and, and, and take us into the new year. So let's just start it out with every, everybody close their eyes and say these mighty words. And the presence of God will touch you. Jesus, I'm precious to you. Jesus, I'm precious to you. Wow, isn't that amazing? God loves you, champions. That's what we, what we want to talk about today is, is how much God loves you and, and, uh, and, and the kingdom of God this ne next year, 2014. So uh, we got some exciting things to talk about. And uh, I, I believe the Lord's gave me a message that will fire you up and, 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 and take you into uh, the, the, the world of championship. Of uh, being a champion in the, in, in in any circumstance, no matter how it is, it doesn't matter because you're a champion and you're going to act that way. We're gonna uh, we're gonna show we're gonna see today how Jesus acted that way, and he was our example. It, you know, it says in, in, in John that he, he he was he did everything. He did nothing by his own power. But he did it uh, 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 by, by his father. And he, and he also sa says in Matthew, he says he did everything by the power of the Holy Ghost. So, and he said, it's, it's not me. And in John 14, he said, it's not me doing the works. It's my father doing the works. So he was an example on this earth. He didn't do it as God. He was God, but he walked this earth as a man to be an example to show how it's done by a man being filled with the Holy Ghost, like Acts 10, uh, 10 38, how Jesus of Nazareth, full of the Holy Ghost and, and power, went about doing good, healing all of those who, who were oppressed of the devil. So we, he went through this world, uh, knocking the devil off, off people and establishing his kingdom. Well, that we're going to see how you're going to do that in 2014. Well, so we got to look and see, well, how Jesus did that. So uh, I, I'm going to give you a little bit here of, uh, uh, New Year's Eve. I, I, I went to uh, bed. I, I didn't go to bed. I went to wait 12, to about 11 o'clock and I went before the Lord. I grabbed my pencil and paper and I got my notebook and, and I went before the Lord, I was praying for it because I wanted something for 2014 to fire me up, fire you up, and fire us all up for Jesus for 2014. Well, I went there at about 1230. Uh, you know, I didn't get that, about an hour and a half, and I didn't get anything that I knew consciously, but I knew God gave me something. So the next day, one of the, uh, 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 a lady in our ministry, FBI Susan, now this is a this is a this is a champion. You understand? This is a champion woman, and you're going to hear her speak on this radio. You're gonna I'm going to bring her on this radio. You're going to see fired up women for God that knows God. And this this girl is a a, a, a wild woman. but she has this dream. She's an art. I never have these dreams. Well, she has it. She calls me up and tells you about this dream. And this and you're going to see this dream is for me and you. What it is? And she said I had a dream that we were over this house, over this big house art, and you were there. Your wife was there, and my husband Mark was there. There, and, and the wind was blowing. It was blowing hard. A huge storm was going big, and it was just going all over the place. And the windows were shaking. And there was these huge, massive trees outside the house. And 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 the, and, and the wind was going to blow and be crashing on the house. And he, she said, "Your wife was getting up there and saying, yeah, the, that, that, that those trees are not." Not she's making dinner. Those trees are not going to fall in my house. They're not going to fall in this house. They're not going to fall. In this house. So that's my wife giving that destination. She says, so she didn't command him. She says, now she says I was there, and, and her husband Mark, and she was there, and the wind was blowing out. She says she remembers how open and open the door right in the face of that storm, and she would look at those trees, and she was talking to those trees, and we're commanding those trees. Trees move back, move back. Move back. You're not going to fall. Down. She was commanding those trees in the middle of a storm. The storm was coming back in the name of Jesus. And she says she thought me, me and uh, Mark were doing the same, but she didn't say for sure. And, 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 and all of a sudden, the trees jumped up and these huge trees started moving back away from the house. 
Well, uh, that's good. And then she says she heard this uh, this gal, this this little girl, come driving up in this van, and it was FBI Brenda. Uh, she comes driving up and make a delivery, and, and she said, "Wow, we uh, we got a delivery here coming in." And so we prayed over her and sent her away, and commanded those trees not to knock her out either. And she went on her way. Well, what's that got to do with a dream? Well, how are we going to interpret this dream? Well, let's just see. I'm not much of an interpreter dream, but it does seem like a neat dream, and and see if we can uh, use this as the prophetic for our year. Because there are storms coming in our year. Is there not storms coming in 2014? Oh, so we want to teach you how to deal with the storms of 2014. We're going to say how you overcome the storm. How you do the impossible. How you can do the impossible. Because there are storms coming in your life. Amen? Amen. Oh, oh, yeah, oh no, Art, it's just all oh, going to be great. It's going to be fantastic. Oh, yeah. I'm not one of those prophets, man. Say, so, hey, there are going to be storms in the end of time. You're going to the land of milk and honey. But there's giants you got to fight. I'm afraid that's the word of God. If I just tell you everything's going to be sweet and all the deals, I'm not telling you real Christianity. Real Christianity is not that. Real Christianity is, is, is fighting many battles and having many more victories in the name of Jesus. Say this right now. You know, the devil thinks he can wear me out. Go ahead. The devil thinks he can wear me out, but I can wear the devil out. I can wear the devil out. Say it again. I can wear the devil out in the name of Jesus. I can send him back to hell skipping because he can't destroy me because Christ lives in me. Because Christ lives in me. Because Christ lives in me. Say that. You keep saying that. You understand this. So we're, we're going to see uh, how this uh, deal, because there's swords coming and you're going to have to command a mass of things to move in your life when the enemy comes at you. And, and there are going to be people that have words, words uh, of salvation, uh, of, of life, of the gospel of Jesus Christ, you know, who is born again, who is saved, needs to come to the, to come to the Lord. And there's people and messengers have been sent and you got to pray for protection on them. But you cannot just because it's not convenient. Life is not good. You cannot stop giving the gospel. The gospel of God must be gone, gone out. You must tell people the good news, right? Okay. You just don't talk about it. Oh, I'm a Christian. I'm going to hide in my closet when the storm. No, you are a warrior, my friend. Say, I'm a warrior. I'm a warrior in Christ. You know, I'm strong and mighty. Say, I'm strong and mighty because Christ lives in me. Christ lives in me. Uh, you see, when I say it once, I'll always repeat it. You repeat it with me, all right? Because we're stirring you up. I'm stirring you up. I'm bringing up the fire. Fire, fire, fire. The fire of God's word. My Remember that the word, is, uh, the word of God is like a fire, it says in Jeremiah. It's like a fire, and it breaks the rock. It breaks the impossible. So fire, fire, fire on you. All right, so uh, remember, this is where we're going. So... So here's here, here's what 2014 is going to bring. Now let's see how Jesus handled this. Okay, uh, you know this is real stuff. And now everybody doesn't understand about the resurrection and God's giving them why the resurrection are because I'm going to show you how Jesus uh, handled storms coming to his life and how he got ready for storms. The same way when I was in the fire department, you know I was a fire captain 36 years in Los Angeles County, and uh, when we would go out and pre-plan the big fires, big buildings, massive buildings in our area, we would pre-plan the fire how we were going to act on the fire because when we got there we didn't want to make all of the decisions when we got there or we'd make we'd make mistakes we'd be in the panic of the situation we wouldn't know how to act we'll make a oh you do this yeah and then we make mistakes but if you pre-plan the fire 90 percent of the of all your problems are handled by pre-planned said. So I'm going to teach you how to pre-plan disasters coming in your storm, that those storms will be under your feet. Those trees will move in your life. I'm going to show you that. You're going to see this today. And this is how Jesus did it. Now, what it, it, Jesus uh, said this. Most people don't understand this. They think it was the idea uh, of the Pharisees or the Roman guards. They think that Pharisees and Roman guards' idea was to uh, put the guards there at Jesus' tomb. Well, it's not. Well, you're saying that. No, it was not their idea. It was not the Romans' idea. It was not. It was Jesus' idea. What do you mean by that? How can you prove that, Art? Well, I'm going to give you the scripture. I'm going to prove that to you. And, and I'm going to show you that why Jesus did this. You know, G, it's, it's more important here that you understand this. Because once you understand the resurrection and what the resurrection is going to do for you, it's going to stir you up today. It's going to stir you up for 2014. It's not going to be a fact. It's going to be a grind in you. All right. Well, what do you mean by that, Art? Let's take a look. Okay. Here's what Jesus, Jesus predicted it, it was coming up. So, you see, what makes it, uh, the resurrection uh, 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 really a little bit different, different than uh, 
then uh, uh, just he rose from the dead because a lot of he, he rose from the dead. Uh, uh, Lazarus rose from the dead. Elijah rose from the people from the dead. But what made the difference of Jesus Christ is that Jesus Christ predicted that he would rose from the dead. And he set them up. He didn't he just predict it. He set them up. How do you know he did that, Art? Because he said eight times the scriptures publicly says, he said this. He said eight times publicly, they're going to kill me, put me on the cross, and the third day I'm going to rise from the dead. He's letting everybody know this. He was doing two things. He was setting the Pharisees up that they would have guards there. Because there were no guards, no proof, right? Supposing if he had died and rose from the dead, there were no guards there. Nobody would have known about it. Yeah, so I just, it's just gone. Hey, they could have stole the body. To, but when the guards were, he set the guards up, the guards had to be there. And Jesus made sure that, because he told the guards, oh, how do you know he did that? Well, let's just, let's just read the word of God and see if Art Montgomery's right or he's a big bag of wind. All right? All right. It got his own ideas. Okay, let's take a look at this right here. Matthew twenty seven sixty two. The following day, that is after the day of preparation and his death, the high priest and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate, the Roman governor, and said, Sir, remember how the impostor, talking about Jesus, said while he was still alive, after three days I, wa I will be raised. That's what he said. Therefore, Pilate ordered the tomb to be secured until the third day, or his disciples may go and steal it and then tell the people, he has risen from the dead. This is their worst nightmare. You understand. They made sure this, they didn't want him coming out of the grave. That'd be their worst nightmare. They did not want him coming out of the grave. They did not. They were going to stop that. The devil was going to stop that. They knew this was impossible. And they thought for sure the disciples were going to try to steal it. Then, and then they said the last deception would be, be worse than the first. So that's the Matthew 24. 2764. So the, they, this is in the Word of God. And Pilate tell them, You have a military guard. Go and make the cum as secure as you know how. Wow. Secure as how. Wow. Let's see. And, uh, you know, so, so th they had the order, so they went and secured the tomb. So you got to understand, there were witnesses there. That, uh, on this tomb. And these were hostile witnesses. These weren't witnesses that believed God would raise from the dead. These were hostile witnesses. And God got them there, and they didn't want to be witnesses, but they became the witnesses. You understand? That's what makes Christianity so wild. Christianity is like no other religion in the world. They have absolutely empirical proof that you can look at beyond a reasonable doubt. You say, well, oh, beyond a reasonable doubt? Yeah, I mean, beyond a reasonable Is there doubts? You could say there's doubt, but uh, 12 men could lie. Uh, 500 uh, witnesses could, could lie, but not reasonably that you could say this. Men died. Five, by the way, there were 500 witnesses, not one or two, saw him raised from the dead. That's a lot of witnesses. Say 500 witnesses that were there when he rose the dead. And then he stayed on the earth for 40 days, letting people touch his hands and his wounds, giving you proof beyond a reasonable doubt that he conquered the devil. Now that's pretty wild stuff, isn't it? That's the kind of proof you want. You want proof that you can see and men give life. Well, art, 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 art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, uh, but what, what, what about that is proof of the resurrection? And that's important for you to understand because no religion in the world has that except Christianity. You know, uh, none of them, they all talk about their doctors, but they don't say anything about miracles. They don't talk about that. But this was the capstone, uh, uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, it. This, this gave all of Jesus' words credibility. Supposedly, now this is an example. Supposedly, I said to you, I want you guys to give me all your money because I'm going to bet it on the horse in the seventh race. And I know who's going to win. Uh, give me all, give me your thousand, give me ten thousand, give me a thousand, give me everything you want. Would you trust me? No, you would not. You say, because I have no credibility. But if you watch me for a year, every day, come back and pick the same horse and win every day for a year. Then I have some credibility. But the real credibility is when you personally put your money down and invest yourself into me. And then you say you win and you get the reward and you see the reward come in your life. The credibility, that's that, then I have credibility. Jesus' words were credible. He had all the prophecies coming up to his existence. They had all the miracles, but this was the cornerstone and the cap of all credibility. Because then you know every word that Jesus spoke had credibility. 
You can put your life on it. You can put your life savings. You can trust it. No other religion has this. So this is important. You understand Christ went to great efforts to give you proof, proof that he rose from the dead, not just a, a, a theory, a proof that we have that we can look at. Uh, yeah, well, you say, hey, Art, uh, uh, a lot of people uh, uh, say that. No, no, no. The proof is 12 men died and were tortured. And these were 12 men that absolutely were scared half to death. And just the thought of being uh, uh, persecuted, they denied him. But after the resurrection, they saw him. There's something different happened. Something different happened in him. And what was that difference? They saw him come up out of the grave. They were changed men. And why were they changed? Let's take a look at this. I want you to look at this real carefully. Uh, let's see. Because then not only did he rose from the dead, they understood something now because they received it. And they know it was personal to them. And it says, Acts 17, 31. Because, he's, because he has set a day, that's God has set a day, what is going to judge the world with justice through a man. That's Jesus, whom he appointed, who has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. So God has given you proof beyond a reasonable doubt that he raised Jesus. People, you can trust Jesus. You can trust him. I, I, you've got, got that proof beyond a reasonable doubt. And that man, Jesus, these apostles knew they denied him this time. If they denied him this time, he would judge them at the end of their life, their whole whole existence. So now death meant nothing. Torture meant nothing because they knew they were, they were, they were going for the kingdom of God that's going billions and billions of years. And they weren't going to throw that away for a little bit of life here on this earth. They were not going to be that. They weren't that stupid. They knew the facts as it is. Jesus Christ was the dead and they witnessed it and they saw it and they received it. So you got to come into him. But what is, uh, what, what, why? Okay, so this is something you as a non-Christian, I want you got non-Christian right now. Think about it. Do you want to enter that proof right now and have it a part of your life that you know you're going to heaven and not hell because God has given you proof? All right, now here, here's where, where, how Jesus handled this. Okay, uh, this, this is it. We'll give the salvation call in a minute. And, and it says, Jesus said in Isaiah 50, uh, verse 7, The Lord has helped me so I won't be disgraced. There I have made my face like flint that I know I will not be put to shame. So he, he said, and then he said in Luke uh, 13, 31, at that time, some of the Pharisees came and told Jesus to leave and get out of here because Herod wants to kill you. And Jesus said, he told him, go tell that fox. Listen, I am drive out demons and healing today and tomorrow. On the third day, I'll finish my work. I must be on my way today, tomorrow, and the next day because it's not possible for our prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. He is setting his face like flint. You must set your face with words this year that you're going to go through storms. You're, you're going to be victorious. You're going to be a mighty man of God. Let the devil come. Let all the foxes come. But you are going to be a man. Say, I'm a mighty man of God. I'm a Christian and I'll, I'll never give up. I am a Christian and I'll never give up. I'm a warrior for Christ. Uh, uh, Jesus, uh, I'm the head and not the tail. I, uh, uh, when I speak, the devil obeys. I lay my hands on the sick and they get well. All right, you, you're right, you've got this. As you do this, when the problems come, you've already set yourself like Jesus. He set himself like flame. He started telling everybody. You start telling everybody how what you're going to do this next year. You're saying, I'm going to be better. I, I, my family's coming back together. My kids are coming back to Jesus. Uh, 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 I'm going to get a good job. This year, my prosperity is rolling up. I'm getting better. God's on my side. I'm the head, not the tail. You say these words. Say them. Say, I'm the head and not the tail. I, I, I rule over circus. They do not rule over me. I am a Christian. I love Jesus. And I will never, ever quit. I will never, ever quit. So these are things you want to do. And, and you want to instill God in your heart. And you want to get yourself fired up for Jesus. This is 2014. And we're going to tear it up this year. All right. Anybody here at the same Christ? 2014. Close your, uh, close your eyes and say these words. You know, say, Father God. And, and, and you're going to go to heaven, not to hell. I could guarantee Jesus' words, the resurrected Jesus, you can count on. He come up in the grave. You can count on take you to heaven on these words, not because you're a good person, because you've trusted in Jesus. Say, Jesus, I love you so much. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. I repent of my sins. I ask you, Jesus, to be my Lord and Savior. You're my Lord and God. 
I renounce, I renounce all witchcraft, anger, bitterness. I forgive all those who have hurt me in the past. I forgive myself. You rose from the dead. I believe that, Lord. I believe that, Lord. You rose from the dead. I rose from the dead. I'm now a champion, a warrior for Christ. I'm strong and mighty. I'm a son of God. Holy Spirit, baptize me right now and fill me with your Holy Spirit. And fire, 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 I receive you. Now everybody take three deep breaths. Fire the Holy Ghost on you. 2014 has started, champions. Get in the running gates and shout because God loves you and something good is going to happen to you this day. God bless you, champions. Top of the morning.